Hello guys and welcome. My name is Brittany and if you don't know, I'm a research assistant. I will be starting medical school in August, which is a month from now so this is a highly requested video i've gotten so many questions on my vlogs i've done a couple of day in the life and week in the life of a research assistant and i had so many people ask me a lot of questions so i decided to put it all into one video if you're looking for a specific question you can go down to the description and look at the timestamp to see if you can find your question there but i hope you guys find this helpful i know a lot of you are also in the same position as i am or are just looking to be a part of research field yeah let's get started so the first question is what is a research assistant so a research assistant is someone who literally supports a research group through managing logistics or they can even be directly involved in data collection and analysis which is what i did i did also get the question of do i work alone no i do not work alone i work with a team so we have the pi which is the principal investigator he's a professor at the medical school it is his lab his project he hires a couple of people there are postdocs we work with I work with a postdoc and another lab technician. And a lab technician is another word for a research assistant. And we have graduate students rotating into our lab six weeks at a time. If they like what we do in the lab, they'll stay with us. If not, they'll just rotate on to the next lab. But right now we have one permanent grad student and we have one that's on rotation. Why did I decide to become a research assistant as a pre-med student? Because I wanted to go into the medical field. I also wanted to see the behind the scenes of it. It was interesting to see how all the medicines I will prescribe in the future come to be. I've never done any kind of bench work research. Back in undergrad, I did some research dealing with people, cognitive and learning behaviors more than like cells and stuff. Another reason why is research actually looks amazing on your application. A lot of schools actually require research. I know later on when I get into medical school, I'll have to have my own research project. So it's good to get this kind of experience. And the last reason is because back in undergrad, I learned a lot of these techniques just by reading them, but I didn't ever actually carry them out. Being in a setting like this allowed me to learn so much more, and also at the same time, I got to expand my network. So what exactly did I do as a research assistant? There were a lot of things. When I first started, I was doing animal husbandry, which is where you're basically taking care of the animals. Every time we had a new research cohort, my coworker would put like ear tags with them to identify them. I would measure their food intake, their body weight. I also did MRIs for them. So we had this like MRI machine and I would put the little mice in the MRI tube and stick them in the MRI machine to calculate fat mass and lean mass. Whenever the mice have been on a specific diet for long enough, we would do an animal sacrifice which is something that I actually didn't know I had to do. We harvest their organs, tissue, cells, and things like that so that we can do in vitro research. And with in vitro research, I've done ELISA, I've done immunohistochemistry, and a couple of other things. It's very, very broad, and it really all depends on what kind of research and who you're doing research with. After doing in vivo and in vitro studies, I also have to do data analysis. I had to learn how to use Excel, Prism, Fiji, image j those are all the programs we use to analyze the data that we collected that way we can present our findings my next question was what was expected out of you because i wasn't a postdoc i didn't have that much pressure on me but at the same time we had two weekly meetings the first one was a one-on-one -on -one, so i'll sit down with the professor and present any new data i have or any new information regarding the mice the tissues the anything just a, a weekly update on what i'm doing professor provides a timeline and also tasks to do and you just complete them. My professor was very lenient so if we had any problems or issues they were able to easily extend the timeline but I wasn't pressured to have something new every week but usually I was able to put something together within a week and one of the things that I love about the professor that I worked with was that they didn't micromanage. We were left alone in the lab to complete our task but the professor wasn't like overseeing like everything we're doing. It made us more independent and also it made us more comfortable and we all completed our tasks in a timely manner. Next question is, what are your hours like? Right now, I work a nine to five, Monday through Friday, your typical 40 hours a week. Back then, when I first started, I was working part-time. I would work nine to three, three days a week, and I would have another part-time job afterwards. But then later on, I decided to move into full-time so that I could be more serious with my projects. My tasks got more serious as I became full-time. Instead of just assisting the lab, I also had my own projects because I was now full-time instead of part-time. Do you get breaks? Like I said earlier, my professor doesn't micromanage. We do not clock in, we do not clock out. We uh, send in an Excel sheet every other week. 
with the hours that we have worked. As far as like breaks and lunch break goes, we're encouraged to once in a while get up and walk around on our own time and lunch break is usually an hour whenever you can take it there are some days that i'll not have lunch until later just because i'm like busy working on something but most of the time i take my lunch around 12 and we have like an hour it's super lenient nobody's gonna be staring at the clock waiting for you to come back the only time they really come in and check on you is when they need something it felt very very chill okay so one of the most asked questions was how did I get this job and basically like where did I apply? At the time that I applied, there was only one medical school in my area. I went on to Google and looked up research jobs for that specific school. There were a couple of options in different specialties, so I just read through them and see what I was interested in. Right now I'm doing research for the Department of Physiology and we specialize in metabolism. I found it very interesting because obesity is so prevalent and it is the leading cause of a lot of diseases. So that's why I decided to pick the specific lab. The professor's name was there so I started reading more about the research and I just became very interested in that specific lab. Um, I applied and I actually got an email not too long later from the professor saying that they wanted me to do a Zoom interview. The interview was very chill. It felt like a nice conversation. Because I read into the professor's research, I was able to explain my interests and I got the job. That's just my personal experience, but I know one of my coworkers, they applied to another lab and during their interview, they were being hammered with content questions. Um, they were asking about certain lab techniques and other things in chemistry. The difficulty of the interview really just depends on the professor. At the end of the day, they're picking people to work for them. Another question that I got a lot was what if you have no experience and also what are the requirements for the job? Like I said earlier, it really varies between different professors. In my case, you had to have a Bachelor of Science degree in chemistry, biology, or an equivalent to apply for the job and my professor didn't require any experience. They were looking for permanent staff but since they saw that I was a pre-med student they wanted to train me. For skills you have to be willing to learn. Somewhat of a fast learner and willing to ask questions. I did not know how to do any of the lab techniques before I came in there. The only thing I remembered was like a septic technique in pipetting. I never did ELISA, never did immunohistochemistry, I never cultured cells, never had to maintain cells. It was a very big learning curve. My professor was so understanding. The way my professor taught us these skills was they would do it first and we would watch them and then we repeat on our own. If we had questions, we'd ask them, but you basically kind of have to figure it out yourself. And this kind of ties in with the next question. Is there any kind of on-ground training? The only training the university provided was animal training. And this is when I realized I had to do animal sacrifices. We were taught how to pick up mice, how to inject mice, and we had to sacrifice them. And that was a very tough day. Does it get better? How do I feel about it? I don't like that we have to do it. It does get a little bit easier, but I still feel very very bad about it. I wish there was a better alternative. I didn't know I was signing up for this but I signed up for it. I just had to push back my fear and continue. It was crazy but towards the end I was just using a lot of the tissues we collected so I wasn't doing much of that. It was more of my co-worker's job. Another question that I got asked a lot was how much do I get paid? When I first started, I got paid $18.39. After three months and I did my evaluations and everything, I now get paid $19.36. For a job with a bachelor's degree, it's not that much, but I was doing it for the experience. There were a couple of other labs that were paying more, but they were not in a medical university. That's why I ended up choosing this position, even though I did pay a little bit less than the others. And also because it suited my interests more. The last question I have is, was it worth it and what are the benefits? It is definitely worth it. It's one of my favorite jobs that I've had so far. Even though I love medicine, this gave me a chance to do something completely different and I have learned so much. Not only have I learned lab techniques, I've also learned how to use Excel, which is, I didn't even have any experience in using Excel or any experience with statistics, but now I know a little bit about it and also if everything goes well I do have three publications on the way uh, one with my professor I also have two other labs with their projects I'm gonna be a co-author for three papers if everything goes well so that's super exciting I was just hoping to get one but three is very nice and I'm so grateful for this experience also because it is like a nine to five 40 hour week kind of thing we do have a lot of benefits we have paid holidays we have a lot of annual leave which is PTO 
we have a lot of sick time and we also had personal days and there was also a lot of good insurance but overall it has been an amazing experience actually quitting at the end of this month because school is starting soon so i wanted to give myself a little bit of time and relax at home before i go to medical school so those are all of my questions if you do have any other questions feel free to leave them in the comments below and i'll answer them i'm so glad i decided to be a research assistant during my gap year good luck to those who are also trying to be research assistants i know a lot of you said you're going to be in the research field so best of luck to everybody i hope y'all found this video helpful and i'll see you guys next time bye